Good morning out there in PT land. This is Morgan Denny coming to you live from Portland, Oregon, where it is still dark outside, but it's going to be a beautiful day. I'm sure of it. Um, before we start with the PT on Ice Daily Show, I want to tell you guys about a couple courses coming up. We've got clinical management of the fit fitness athlete happening uh, up in Michigan. Um, Jess is going to be teaching the Performing Artist Comprehensive Management in Pennsylvania uh, the next weekend, and Jeff will be in Seattle teaching Lumbar Spine Management uh, this coming weekend as well. The following weekend of the 28th, Justin and I will be teaching Total Spine Thrust Manipulation uh, in Baton Rouge, which should be a really good time. Um, and that same weekend, cervical spine management is happening in South Dakota. So for the next two weekends, guys, if you're anywhere near those, cor those courses, please feel free to check them out. They're going to be good ones. Um, and if not, just check the website, ptonice.com. Um, we've got a whole map up and a schedule and calendar of upcoming courses. So that said, let's talk about today's topic. Um, today we're going to talk about finding your purpose, because I think a lot of times in physical therapy, we end up getting burnt out really easily, actually. You know, we have a profession in which we are often listening to people's problems all day. Um, we're very engaged. We're always doing research. There's not a whole lot of time in physical therapy if you're a good therapist for yourself, right? And so a lot of people tend to get burnt out, even in their first couple of years. And I think one of the ways that you can avoid burnout is really figuring out some purpose, some different way of looking at things. And so what I want to do today is talk a little bit about ways you can do that. And I'm going to do it through telling you about my story, because this is something that I definitely went through as well as a young and maybe like a medium young physical therapist. Um, so after I graduated from PT school, I was just like everybody else, you know, first job, you get into the mix, everything's crazy, you're working 50 plus hours a week, you know, you think everything is normal, but you really have no idea because it's your first job ever. Um, and you get a little bit burnt out. You know, my first job out of school, I was overwhelmed, as everyone is, of course, and I, but I felt like, again, that was normal. But after a couple of years, I started getting that feeling of, is this really what I want to do? You know, is this going to be for me? Can I maintain this level of go all the time? And I, were, I really wasn't sure. Um, and so probably after two, three years of working, I took what I call my first retirement. I quit PT and I decided I was going to travel. Um, I was really nervous with traveling that I wouldn't remember how to be a good PT when I got back because, you know, there's all those skills that you learn, that you hone. And some of them are just like second nature. You know, they come to you without thinking. But I found when I got back, I was actually a much better PT. You know, things were a little bit slower that first week. But after traveling for a while, it's like it gave my brain some time to settle, some time to resurface and figure out different things and gain perspective on different injuries. So I worked again, but I was working kind of in a similar clinic setting and I got burnt out. And at this point, I was starting to feel like PT was really not the thing for me. It's not that I just needed a break. I needed to do something else. And, you know, at that point, I was in my late 20s, right around when I think many of us start having our mid-youth crisis, trying to figure out what I was going to do. You know, I was never the type of person that just wanted to work a job, you know, eight to five and be done for the day. And that was it. I never felt like I was just the type of person who wanted to go through life and just buy a house and that was it. Like, that's just not for me. I wanted something different or something more, or at least I really felt like I did. And so I started kind of doing this soul searching and trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do, which may have been in PT and may not have. So on my second retirement, I actually took over a year off of physical therapy, which I think a lot of PTs find to be a really scary idea. Um, but it was one of the best things I ever did. And at that point, what I did was I did a totally different project with a partner at the time called EcoJaunt, where we traveled around the country, lived in a van, and created videos about sustainable living topics to teach at schools and put on the internet. And it was something completely outside of PT, and yet super related in my mind, because it has to do with health and wellness, not only of the planet, but of people living in their communities and how they engage. 
And that's one where when I came back from that trip, I had gained a really different perspective on the world and on people. And it gave me a better ability to engage with humans um, and talk about different things that were really valid topics currently still are. Um, So that was really good. And that kind of gave me a different perspective. So I came back from that refreshed. And I'll tell you, as much as it may sound like after a year or a year and a half of not being a physical therapist, things don't sink anymore. You're going to forget everything you knew. It's completely not true. That stuff's in your bones. You do it every day. You can take time off. You can gain perspective. You can become a more well-rounded person, and it will only give you a better ability to be a caring, compassionate PT. So that was my second retirement. Um, And that was definitely in the zone of when I was really looking for the thing, you know, the purpose, the something outside of myself, outside of PT or maybe within PT. Um, And it wasn't long after getting back from EcoJohn and beginning to work again uh, in a clinic that actually I'm still in because it's so fantastic and magical, um, but that I got an email that said, hey, do you want to go to Haiti? And for those of you who don't know, I'm pretty involved in Haiti now, and I'll get into that a little bit. But I had no idea that that one email, that one opportunity was going to change my life as dramatically as it did. So I went to Haiti. I became engaged. I had no idea that that was going to become a thing for me and treated patients and saw how important PT can be. And I think one of the things that Haiti has shown me that has helped me to really love our profession again, to re-engage in it, to want to be better at it, is how effective it really is, especially in populations that need that, that need to move, that need to be active, that need to be able to walk 10 miles to feed their families or lift heavy items to work. Like people in those communities thrive with PT thrive with some kind of education and knowledge and benefit from medical care. And in communities where people have very little, it really shows you how much you know. It gives you confidence in your skill set and in your understanding of the human body. And while I didn't really have that perspective right off the bat my first trip, that's, those are some things that I've really gained from Haiti. You know, without working in Haiti, there's no way that I would understand the importance of having a better idea about general medical and primary care stuff. That stuff plays into our practice every day in levels that we don't understand. The only reason that I know or that I became engaged in that is because going to Haiti, there was no one else to do that. So you are basically tasked with stepping up, doing more, doing your research before you go, figuring new things out each trip because you know those patients are counting on you. Now, for those of you who don't know, My partner and I founded STAND, which is Sustainable Therapy and New Development, the Haiti Project uh, back in 2014, I believe. It's, you know, the years are kind of swimming together now. But, you know, that project basically takes physical therapists and general medical practitioners to Haiti three times a year for two weeks at a time. It's crazy fun. We treat about 2,000 people each trip. But our goal is always to build the project, to get more consistent, to be able to assist the community in northern Haiti more effectively and more consistently, right? And one of those pieces, one of those goals has always been to be able to hire Haitian clinicians. And that has not actually been an option or possible because physical therapy doesn't exist as a profession in Haiti until until very soon, not until recently, but until very soon. So the very first class of PTs and OTs in the entirety of the country, there's 10 of them, are graduating this December. And so as part of STAND, we are actually hoping to hire two of them to work in our clinic to open it up year round, which is a huge thing for us. This is something that has been that we thought was decades in the making, but it is actually coming up quick. So one of the things that we're working on currently is just figuring out how to maintain this growth, how to maintain this funding, all that kind of stuff. And one of the other lessons that I've learned in Haiti that I think is really key to figuring out your purpose and what to do with it in the profession, in life, however you want to think about it, is figuring out how to find your community. So one of the things that working in Haiti has really taught me is that we could never do any of this stuff alone. We completely rely on volunteers, on the help of others, on the assists, on being able to grow and build because other people are on our team. You know, other people are helping us with what we're doing and are there and willing to give their time and their energy and volunteer and help these patients. 
Like I couldn't treat 2,000 patients all by myself. And I think the reason I'm saying this is because I think as PTs, as communities, no matter what your purpose or your thing is, you need to make sure you find the people around you who want to do that thing with you because you'll never accomplish much by yourself. You might feel like you're more special or you have more acclaim or people you know, can put you on a pedestal, but you'll never accomplish things that way. The only way to accomplish things is by being able to reach out and get people interested in the thing you're doing. It's the only way to figure that out. It also is the best way to stay on top of it and stay engaged and keep your fire. If you're alone, the burnout is much faster. So if you are a PT and you are passionate about PT, you need to find PTs around you who are passionate as well, who on those days where you are feeling low will re-engage you, will get you involved, right? So that said, right, our current goal in terms of Haiti and in my purpose is figuring out how to keep this clinic open year round, how to fund that, right? Because now we have the option, we have the ability. So one of the things the stand is currently doing, and this is the first thing I'm going to ask of you, is that we are currently running a fundraising campaign through uh, an organization called Global Giving. And on Wednesday, September 18th, which is tomorrow, we have Bonus Day. What Bonus Day means is that we are in competition with other groups, other nonprofits that are on the website like we are in order to gain new donors, in order to gain new amounts, in order to get recurring donations. And the groups that get the most new donors, the most new donations, all of those things, will actually win prizes that are money. (laughs) They're not like a stuffed animal or anything. But so if we can get as many new donors as possible tomorrow, Wednesday, September 18th, we will be able to get extra funds for the clinic. We'll be able to pay new therapists more effectively, get new pediatric equipment, all the things that you need to run a clinic year round in a developing nation. So my first ask is to all of you in my PT community, if you can, tomorrow, either go to Stan's Facebook page and click on the Global Giving link, or you can go to the link that I'll post underneath this talk, or you can Google Global Giving and then search Stan the Haiti Project in there. But even if you give us $5, $10, you know, a cup of coffee, going out for a drink one night, if you sacrifice that for this, the bigger, greater picture, that would be very much appreciated by myself and also the whole Stan family. So I would encourage all of you to give because this is a project that's bigger than I am, that's bigger than you are, but it's within our community, the physical therapy community. It's one of the greatest things that gives us purpose is the ability to kind of show how amazing our profession is. And one of the things that that's doing currently is providing care in developing nation. So even if you're not coming with us on our trip in October, which unless you're on the the fancy board right now, you're probably not, (laughs) you can still help. You can still give, you know? And one of the ways to do that is through the global giving campaign. So that's my number one ask. My number two ask of you all today is to say yes more often. Because I think when we're in that point where we're looking for purpose and we're trying to figure out what it is we want to do, it's very easy to wait till the perfect thing comes along. It's very easy to sit back and say, oh, this is a good idea, but it's not for me. Oh, that's great, but I'm not ready. But the problem is the perfect thing is never going to swim up to you and like knock you on the face like a, a dolphin with its nose. I don't know why that's the analogy that came to mind, <laughs> but it's, it's not. It's never going to knock on your door and say, hey, here I am. I'm your life purpose. Welcome. What you need to do is just say yes to things because you never know when that's going to come up. So when friends ask you to go volunteer with them, if you get that email, you know, it doesn't have to be from us saying, hey, come to Haiti with Stan the Haiti Project. It could be from another organization that plants trees in your neighborhood, that works with underprivileged areas and the kids there. Whatever it is, just say yes. It may be something you do one time. It may become your new life purpose, but you never know until you say yes. So say yes more often. That's the second ask. So remember, guys, tomorrow, Wednesday, September 18th is bonus day on global giving. So if you can, really appreciate you throwing down a few dollars just to be a new donor. That way we have the possibility of gaining those extra funds through the site. And also remember, say yes more often. So song of the day is Give a Little Bit by Super Tramp. Hope you guys all have a fantastic Tuesday and I'll post that link below. Go out there and find your purpose.
Hey, thanks for tuning in to the PT on Ice Daily Show. If you enjoyed this content, head on over to iTunes and leave us a review. And be sure to check us out on Facebook and Instagram at the Institute of Clinical Excellence. If you're interested in getting plugged into more ICE content on a weekly basis while earning CEUs from home, check out our virtual ICE online mentorship program at ptonice.com. While you're there, sign up for our Hump Day Hustling newsletter for a free email every Wednesday morning with our top five research articles and social media posts that we think are worth reading. Head over to ptonice.com and scroll to the bottom of the page to sign up.